Hello, I'm Lucelle. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm joined by Angelino to ask him some questions about his artistry. What is your musical background? Okay, so my, my musical background. Um, yeah. I'm born and raised in uh, Malmo in Sweden. Uh, so I've always worked down here, um, gigging, like out playing at restaurants and um, making my own music from the age of maybe 14, 15 maybe together with a crew down here from Malmö in the southern Sweden. Do you play any instruments? I do. I play um I play a guitar. I play the uh, the piano and I play the bass and some ukulele too. <laughs> During my research process, I found a clip of you and a guy named Joel performing mm. your own written song If what inspired you to start writing songs at that age? Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, that was a long time ago. Uh, this is uh, me and my uh, best friend Joel. Um, I play a lot with him, and uh, so this is actually the theme song to our uh, football team. Uh, so this is the anthem which they play like when they walk into the pitch. Um, so Jesus Christ, this must have been like ten, twelve years ago, I think. How old were you? I think it was like. 11 12 maybe hard to tell mm. by this picture man. <laughs> that's so much fun jesus christ yeah this was probably the first song we ever uh, wrote together i think tell us about your debut single yes this girl and what was the inspiration for this song um actually we we started writing that song more like a like a ballad and um and then we just like we just got bored of the song and we just flipped it over, like uh, adjust the tempo of the song to more high tempo. Um, we added a guitar instead, uh, more like a fun version of the song. And then we just said, like, just write some fun lyrics uh, for the song too. Like uh, the story that I have all these different types of, <laughs> of girls, uh, which do not reflect my normal life, but it was, just a, uh, a fun text, I think, for the for the song. What is your approach uh, in writing new songs? Do you start with the lyrics or melodies? Usually I start with the melody first and um, then go into lyrics. But sometimes, I mean, it depends from song to song, but sometimes it's easier to start with, um, with the text and then apply the melody afterwards. But uh, I find it more comfortable to start with a melody I think like set the uh, uh, set what kind of emotion it's going to be in I think that's easier at least for me do you also work as a producer or is that something uh, no not as a producer I mean I, I can record myself I can play some instruments but um, I can't make a final production is that something you want to learn and do in the future I mean sure absolutely uh, and I learn new things about how to make a beat and how to make a full production every day. So I hope in the future, at least, that I can be be close to do it. What was the inspiration for the song Hurricane? It was such a long time ago we wrote it, but I mean, it's just a love song, really. Um, uh, I have to sing it in my head just to remember it, but so I have the clip to gun, the water, to your peace. I mean, I'd be all these things for you. Um, I do anything for you, really. It's it's a love song that just like to tell everything about how you want to risk everything for for this person. I guess and that's the answer. <laughs> it was so long, yeah. long time ago. <laughs> order. On your EP, Living mm -hmm. Room Sessions, you worked with Jonas Passion, Marcus Bergman, and Martin René on every track. How yeah. did the four of you meet? I mean, we're from uh, Malmo um the four of us so we always work together really um since day one um so we we started to work me and the marcus we first started working with that was like 14 maybe uh and then we met up with jonas um when i think it was like 16 or something and then we just made songs ever since so it was just natural to to uh, to work with them during my ep as well it's great to have like a team that you can uh, like keep working with. 
Exactly, and especially down here in Malmo, where we don't have as many musicians as up in Stockholm, for example. So it's just nice to have your little team of people. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, I love those guys. What was the inspiration for the song, I'm Sorry? Yeah, it's just a song really like asking for forgiveness and just realizing like, what have I done? And um, like, um, just all this emotion that you feel when you when it's not working out and you just miss the hell out of, hell out of a person and um, just all the things you could have done but didn't and um, just asking for forgiveness really. Tell us about the song De Volme that was released by Mendes and Kevin and Mondo. How did you end up being one of oh, the songs? Oh wow, artists? that's right. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, I think I, I just played the guitar on that one really. Ah. I just, I just, uh, they sent me the um, the vocals, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, asked me to um, play some guitar on it. So that's what I did. Okay, because you were yeah, almost forgot here. about this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, I like I found it yesterday, like last night. I was like, okay, I need to ask him about it because I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, it's cool. Tell us about the song With or Without Me and, that, and how you end up you're collaborating with Lucky Luke and Delaney Yang. Yeah, that was so much fun. Uh, so we were at a um, writing camp in uh, Dubai mm -hmm. um, together with both Lucky Luke and uh, Delaney Jane. And we also have um, this other um, uh, producer on the track called uh, La Vision, who is an Italian guy just amazing musician um, and so we just ended up in a session together um, making this uh, this song it was a long day I think it was like a 12 hour session maybe but um, yeah I was really happy with the result of the song and, and uh, it's just a really really good song I think mm -hmm. is that the so camp that is done by powerhouse yeah exactly so that's the label that I'm signed to as well so they all Yearly, they host these uh, camps. Um, normally, they are in Dubai, but they're also like in the uh, Dominican Republic and mm -hmm. also around the world. That's nice. And would you like to do more collabor collaborations like this? Absolutely. I love like, I think writing by myself is just, I don't like that. I always like making music together with different kinds of people, learning things in every session. And um, yeah, I hope I will have another collaboration with, with someone. Absolutely. And which artist would you like to collaborate with? Mm. I mean, there's so many. Uh, um, if I like thinking of uh, the big dreams is mm -hmm. like John Mayer, um, maybe Shawn Mendes. Um, those are like two people that I really love. And it's a huge inspiration in my and making of music. What is the inspiration for the song Lonely, released by Leon, and how did you end up being one of the songwriters? Yeah, let's see here. Um, yeah, it's a really cool song. He's an amazing singer, uh, an upcoming artist. He will do absolutely brilliant. Um, so I think we we made that song. I haven't read, uh, I just think I made the melody for the, for the chorus in that uh, song, actually. Okay. But um, yeah, it's a great song and I'm happy with the result of it. I really am. How do you ad adapt your songwriting process when writing with other people? Um, I mean, when you go into a room with musicians and creative people, you just have to be open-minded. Um, just um, like participate with what you can do and what you do best and um, let every people uh, speak up and and uh, and do their thing too. So just op open-minded, I think, is the most important thing when you meet new people, especially in a session. Is there anything in like songwriting that you that you think is difficult in creating? It sure is in in every every aspect of writing a song. It's it's difficult, De depending on on what you write, of course. But um, I don't have anything like specific that I think it's more difficult than than anything else but it's a process writing a song it takes time sometimes sometimes it takes like 10 minutes sometimes it takes 
many months to get the final result. So it's a process and, and it's always hard writing a song. And what was the inspiration for the song Stay? Like, oh, Jesus Christ, yeah, Stay, wow. Uh, I just have to think for a bit here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But uh, um, the song Stay is about a relationship changing over time. It's like realizing that it's not as good as it was in the beginning of the relationship and the difficulties that you might face um, with the uh, the changes that, that comes in a relationship. Mm. That I would guess is the description of the song. And when you're like creating an EP, can it be like, how do you end up p- picking the songs that you have on the EP in the track order or like? How yeah, that's really, possible? that's really difficult actually to, I mean, you always have a lot of songs or at least I had a lot of songs um, and it always the, it's both, I have my opinion, the label has their opinion. Um, so it's like a compromise. I guess mm-hmm. you would say to what songs you you are going to pick, but it's not that easy. It, it's really hard sometimes to to uh, leave a song out, and um, yeah, it's just a big compromise. Do you have like different approach in like in the decision? Like you are approaching it is a lot different than the label, or it, it might be. I mean, some songs are close to my heart. But not as good, like from the commercial point of view, I guess. So that that might be the uh, the compromise that you have to do. Kind of like what people say, and like you can, it's how you want to do like the EP, and like can I fit it in another thing later on? Exactly, exactly. Tell us about the song Weekend Tour that was released by Toko, and where yeah. was it written, and how did you end up being <laughs> on it? Uh, so me and Marcus and uh, and Jonas, we uh, we made this song in English actually, and then uh, I don't know how, but we got in contact with this uh, Toko, who is an amazing artist, and um, uh, he just recorded it and wrote the uh, the Danish lyrics on it, <laughs> and uh, just like two weeks, and then he released it, which was just wow. Okay, here we go. So that was basically that. We just wrote a song in English. He loved it. He rewrote it in Danish and uh, released it like two, three weeks uh, after that. It was really uh, much fun. Can you tell us about the Living Room Studios? Because I saw something about that. Is it? Yeah, exactly. That's the name of the uh, of the four of us working down here, or the three of us: me, Marcus, and Jonas. Yeah. Just a little, just a little name on the team, the songwriting team that we have here. Ah, uh, that's cool. Is it where you are right now? Yeah, now now we're just in uh, uh, a friend's studio. Okay. So we we normally just sit um, at one, uh, or I I just um, got a studio in Limhamn in Malmo. Um, so now we will probably work there from from now on. That's cool. Have different places to work on. Where? Yeah, that's nice. I I love that. What artist inspired you creatively? Mm, I mean Freddie Mercury, I guess, um, who is just an amazing singer and uh, an amazing entertainer. Um, Joni Mitchell, the way she writes. Um, John Mayer, Frank Ocean. I guess those are the people that have that really got to me, um, like an inspiration for the creative uh, aspects of it. Uh, what inspired your song Done? Yeah, so the song Done is um, about a relationship that has ended and you're just like reminiscing all the things that you felt and um, uh, just, you're just done like with everything and you're just fed up with all the feelings and emotions that you still have for the girl. I guess that's, that's what it's about. Now let's talk about Melo. Yeah. And what inspired you to apply to Melody Festival? You know, I, I actually haven't, uh, I didn't think about applying to the Mellow, at least not this year. Um, but I was at this writing camp uh, at Anders Vretov, uh, mm-hmm. who is an amazing producer. Yes. Uh, he and Warner Music, Warner Music is hosting a camp every year. 
and, and they make songs for uh, the Melody Festival. And so I ended up there where working with uh, three amazing people, three amazing musicians, uh, Melanie Weber, uh, Julie or Kill J, as she is, uh, that's her artist name, and uh, Tuma Stengard. And we just wrote this um, amazing song that I'm so happy with. And um, yeah, then I just got the question after they heard the song uh, from SVT. And they asked me, do you, do you want to sing in the competition? And I said, yes, please, 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 please. That's, that's the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's a lot of like, music that comes from these camps that comes in contests. It's... Yeah, it is. I think from, from that camp, I mean, I think Clara, Hammerström, Liamo, Medina, mm -hmm. and Malou Pritz, I think. The four songs from, from just that camp, which is unbelievable. That's amazing. Who are you collaborating with for your staging? Uh, with the staging it is uh, Sasha mm -hmm. and um, uh, Jenny. And then with the clothes, we have Anton. I think that's the persons that's involved in the in the staging. So Sasha, Jenny, yeah, and uh, Anton, amazing people. And how involved are you in the creative process? Well, I mean, I'm pretty involved. I think um, they always ask if it feels all right, if you have any opinions about anything, about the staging, about the movements that I'm going to do, or about yeah, basically anything. Uh, so I, I feel like I, I can still say what I think and, and uh, have an opinion in it. So that's that's great. Is this your first TV performance? It is. It is. It is. Yeah. So it's super scary, but I'm super excited at the same time. Yeah. How's the process like going through the fitting and like learning the cameras? How the preparation for that? I think that the camera schedule you get. Um, the Thursday and then you're live at Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I only have two days or three days uh, learning all the camera angles. And um, um, so that's a bit stressful, I guess. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah, so you, you but I mean, you, you rehearse the song so many times. So as long as you're like safe in the in the in the song, you can sing it and you know your movements and everything that I think it's uh, it's pretty easy to adapt with the cameras. I hope so, at least. Do you have any upcoming projects after Melo? Uh, not any projects, not yet, at least. Uh, we have great songs that I mm -hmm. hope that we're going to release um, after uh, Melo. I think we have like five or six songs now that I think are really good. So maybe first a single and then maybe a, another EP or an album. It's, it's nice that you have things implied because a lot of people, they just focus on what mellow and they don't yeah, have any so, much to do so. no that's true no sure it, it has been a lot of focus into the the mellow as well but um i just think it's nice to to have songs afterwards to not just stand mm -hmm. there not having anything um when the mellow is over so i'm happy happy with uh, with what we have what are your career goals for 2022 oh wow um I guess just to be happy with my performance in, in the mellow, just knowing that I did everything I could the best possible way. Um, just hoping that it goes well. Um, and then it's just like being able to um, have the, the music um, like as a, as a job. No, not uh, going back to the normal nine to five job, just being able to uh, to live um, working with music. That's the dream, or that's the goal for 2022, I guess. What do you like to do for fun when you're not working on music? Well, just hang out with friends. Um, I think that's the. I, I'm always at the studio though, um, but uh, other than that, just watching football. Um, hang with friends, being with my family. That's, that's basically that.
And I want to ask you about your short videos, reels that you play and sing. What inspired you to like post them? It's not a lot of people. The cover videos? Yeah, cover videos. Yeah, no, I just think it's nice to put something out there. I mean, it's just not not just posting pictures, but mm -hmm. posting things that I do every day. That's the only thing I do, just sitting, just sit and sing. So uh, it's just nice to be able to share it with some people. Yeah, that's nice. Because that's a lot of what nowadays to market your music or like as a brand, it's like you yeah. gotta keep keep up with the social medias. Absolutely. No, that's imp that is an, uh, an important aspect in the in the artist uh, like um, promotion thing. You have to mm -hmm. put yourself out there. <laughs> Exactly. Truly. When you do the marketing on your social media, so like you're just posting mm -hmm. content, like how yeah. much do you think about like branching out or like letting people know where you are? I mean, I, I, I'm not the best with the social media, so I don't have like big plans with it. But I, uh, I mean, I talk with my management and um, trying to like make a plan on how to how to make it as good as possible, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not great with it, I have to say that. I just post videos, basically, <laughs> to try to do something, at least. That's more than, like, some people, because, like, that's yeah, what, yeah. how I found you earlier on, because, like, Melanie posted your covers, and then yeah. that got me to your page, so that's, like, yeah, something. Yeah, that's right. No, yeah. they have, uh, social media has its power. It really does. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, lastly, where can people find you online? Uh, they can find me on, on Instagram. Um, they can find me on Spotify, um, Facebook. I don't have Twitter, not yet at least. But So it's Instagram or Facebook or Spotify. That's great. So thank you for taking the time to talk to me. <laughs> thank you.